Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to View from the Queen Vic. We are your fun and positive podcast about all things EastEnders. And we are doing something very special this week. We have a lot going on. A lot, we're very positive because we have a lot of good news for you about the show. Um, we're positive because Balam are married. Woo! As we yay. predicted, yay! As we predicted, um, they did make it down the aisle, but then all hell broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> After the wedding, which is how it should be in Walford. Yeah, um, you were dead. Bang on with that. Yeah, we had a lot of predictions that actually happened. Not the, and we said there's going to be something we're not going to see coming, and I think we both know what that is. But <laughs> um, we did have a lot of let it like a lot of predictions that came true. Um, so it was a great. We thought it was a great week. Um, the wedding was amazing. We're wearing our wedding hats. Um, if you're listening to us on Podbean or Spotify or one of the other. Um, you know, podcast channels, you can't see us, but we are recording live. We're going to do a video version of this where you can see us in our hats. And Marita has her uh, rainbow makeup on. Yeah, I've got rainbow flags on each nice. of my nice. on my face. Yeah, on your face, and you got little <laughs> <cute> ears. <laughs> and the little so. ears as well. And I have, I'm, we're just going to describe it for you if you can't, if you don't um, look at our, we're going to set up a YouTube channel and put this on YouTube as well. But um, I've got a kind of a pale blue hat, just like Kathy did, except mine's more of a beach hat. Hers was like a real <laughs> hat. Mine's a beach hat. But it was the same color. Still a hat. <laughs> Still a hat, yeah. Um, it's the same color as Kathy's was. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't plan it this way. I just found this, by the way. <laughs> but, um, so that was all great. Um, and so we will be putting this up for video and you can see us in our hats with our drinks and all the good stuff. Um, yeah, but, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing is um, we have very exciting news. We have an EastEnders writer coming on in July, on July 4th, um, one of the female writers, we're not going to tell you who it is until next week because we're big teases like that, but uh, stay tuned for next week and we'll tell you um, who it is. We're very excited to have her on and um, we just think that's going to be a great interview. And since we are the only, um, first and only female hosted, all female hosted podcasts, we're really excited to have that. Um, so we will be interviewing her on July 4th and we'll put that up um, that week. So stay tuned for more information about that. We do have a merchandise uh, store on Redbubble now with our view from the Queen Vic merchandise. So you can get um, all of our uh, good stuff, all of our coffee mugs, you know, travel mugs, like shower curtain, which is interesting but anyway you can, you can get t-shirts yeah, all, all I, I would be interested to know if anyone bought that know, anyone got the shower curtain i know it's like okay <laughs> but that really shows what a true fan you are if you got the shower curtain we're gonna like we love that but yeah, that's um, always commitment. <laughs> yeah that's real commitment um and then we are on uh up to 950 a little over 950 plays on our Podbean channel, which is amazing because we've only been on about, you know, three and a half months. Um, and we are going to celebrate that when we hit a thousand plays, we are going to uh, give away a view from the Queen Big Mug from our Redbubble store. So we have so much happening, so much good news this week. I was like really excited. Yeah, um, I'm so excited to be interviewing one of the writers. Oh, I know. I just, that's been a dream of ours, like a goal. Yeah like a, you know, a long-term goal for us. And we hope to have more on definitely, but um, we are so excited to have her on. She's done some really great episodes and we'll be talking about that um, next week when we reveal, reveal all, because we like to tease you on this show. Um, but let's get started because obviously it was a huge week for Ben and Callum um, and other really great stories going on, sort of interlinking with that. But um, I thought, I'm just gonna say, I thought wedding week was beautiful. Um, and I think we both kind of, we were talking about the show that we both loved it. Um, yeah. You know, um, and, and it was written by Pete Lawson and Darren Little. You just can't go wrong with Pete um, and Darren. They're both amazing. And they both write really well for Balaam. Um, I love that Pete wrote the vows because they were such a callback to that first time. That yeah, the ben beginning. And, right. Ben and Callum had in the park, the conversation they had before, and then you know, when Callum said, why do I feel so lonely? And then he echoed that, you know, in the vows and said, I don't feel lonely anymore. And I just thought, you know, I had had a few issues with the proposal. I thought it was a little 
rom-com for me i think you loved it like most people loved it i kind of the, the parts of that week i had issues with this i just thought was absolutely perfect just absolutely dead on um and i think you did too as far as just the tone and yeah it was just so wonderfully balum mm-hmm. it was very very in character mm-hmm. um i must admit though there was some a few heart stopping moments for me. Oh yeah. Where I, I literally was in the edge of my seat thinking, Oh God, is, is Ben gonna show up? Is yeah. is Phil gonna show up? Is yeah. Ben gonna show up? <laughs> Are they actually gonna going to get to say their vows? And I was right. like just sitting there like, oh I know, I know. I mean it was really you know they did do a good job with the, the suspense because like I loved the scene where Phil goes and talks to Ben and you know he tells him how proud he is of him I mean you would not have gotten this version of Phil Mitchell five years ago even two years ago and yeah. I, I think that scene I feel like got lost a little bit because the rest yeah, of the I it did as well yeah but it was beautiful that I'll be so proud to see you up there and it made me sad yeah. that I know they had to do it this way where they had to, you know, do the big reveal about Callum before the wedding. But I was like, God, I would love for Phil to have been there. But, you know. Yeah, I would have loved for Phil and Kathy to have been uh, yeah, there. Yeah, and Kathy. Um, and I agree with you. Like, that scene with Phil and Ben and the arches literally, like, broke my heart. I know. It, it was just so authentic. And the dialogue was was amazing and Mm -hmm. obviously Max and Steve work so well together and you know my heart was just breaking for Ben because I know he was basically stuck between a rock and a hard place and yeah yeah and also how much it tore him up on the inside right and that he couldn't tell him you know but he when he said he betrayed all of us I was like oh no you know is Phil gonna let this go yeah you know but but you know ben kind of dialed it back and was able to recover but i thought there were several you know ben saying that callum cheated on him and phil didn't even believe yeah he didn't believe him yeah i know i know but what i did love too is that ben yeah phil said you know um i've ruined so many relationships surprise me you know like because i I love that sort of self-reflection from phil we get every once in a while you know we don't get it often but we do get it um yeah i love that as well i mean i mean a lot of people say online that you know like phil's horrible he's that is that is the next thing and it's of course i mean i don't agree with his actions a lot of the time and you know he hasn't treated ben really well and I agree with all that but at the same time I don't think you can deny his character development no um, I mean also 10 uh, years ago to, to now if, if you're not acknowledging that then you're not uh, you either haven't watched it for that long yeah or you're just choosing to ignore the good because you don't like the character I think Right. Well, and that's kind of my issue with Phil. Phil is as complicated as Ben is. So again, if you claim to be a Ben fan, you have to at least understand where Phil's coming from or else you don't understand Ben at all, you know? And that's kind of been my my thing all along is you've got to look deeper, you know? Um, You just have to with somebody like Phil. Between the lines. Yeah. And that was, that's been huge character development. So I wanted to bring that up first because it was one of my favorite scenes. And also I just feel like I got lost. Um, yeah, you know. I, I agree with you. Cause I remember watching that scene thinking, wow, this is really big. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and the other scene that I loved so much was Lexi and Ben. Actually, that was my favorite scene of the week. I'm just gonna like put that out yeah. there that I thought that was absolutely perfect. You know, because it shows how important Ben, you know, you know, Lexi is the center of Ben's world and that's how it should be, you know. Um, and, and to go from her not having much of a relationship to him, you know, with him in the yeah. beginning of her life to now being like the center of his world and being so adult, you know, she's, what, eight years old and she's, you know, playing mind games with her dad to get him to, you know, to open up. Yeah. And, you know, that go- reverse psychology was just oh. brilliant. Like, I knew as soon as she walked into the arches, I just knew, you know, Lexi's going to change his mind. Yeah. And Um, and that was, 
another piece of beautiful writing. Yeah. The dialogue in that scene. Yeah, it was yeah. stunning. Um, and then said, um, I've been fighting my entire life for the right to love whoever right. I want. Right. It just that, that got me that. I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, you know. Well, and I think you kind of called last week that Lexi might be the one to save the day because, um, you know, you were wondering why, like we were both kind of wondering why there were no spoilers for yeah. her and why wouldn't she be there? And she's the one to save the day. So that's why they didn't show, you know, um, yeah. any of the pictures and stuff. Um, so, you know, a few more things that we predicted did actually come true. Yeah. She, um, she's literally so adorable. Like, oh, so cute with her little so rainbow covers. She's to bed. Uh, I'm meant to go first. <laughs> Well, and she was just the right amount of involved, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of feel like she kind of stepped on their proposal a little bit, and I kind of said that at the time, I wish she, you know, kind of let them do their thing, but this time she was the right amount of, you know, when Ben forgot his vows, she just looked at him like, you're fine, you know? She didn't interrupt, she just kind of, you know, she was kind of there as support. He kept looking at her, I love that too, that he was looking at her face to get through that ceremony, you know, that yeah. she was the one, it wasn't even Jay, it was her, you know, and I, I just love their relationship. I think they want one of the best father daughter relationships in soap right now. I just think, you know, again, if you look at their history, he didn't, he didn't know about Lexi in the beginning, then he didn't want anything to do with her. And now she's the one, you know, that's supporting him through like the most important moment of his life. So I just thought it was wonderful. I just, really love yeah. that scene and it, it was so beautiful that entire um uh, scene from when ben walked in yeah. to the room yeah. right through to you know when they were kissing and like yeah. throwing the confetti yeah. over them it was just absolutely stunning it, was, it, yeah. it really was dialogue yeah. performance camera angles yeah. just the whole production yeah. of it was was really really well done and I, I loved every second of it. It was tremendous. Um, yeah. It was great to see Max and Tony able to, you know, go there, you know, and physically as well as emotionally. Yeah. Because yeah. um, it brought, I mean, it brought just that much more realness to it. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, it's been so long since we've seen them be physically intimate mm-hmm. on screen and I just watching that made me realize how much I missed that yeah because it's very important an important aspect of you know a, a performance so it was really good to see that again I yeah really enjoyed yeah that. and you know I don't think anybody quite does heart eyes like no. Max <laughs> to no. be honest that little um, shrug and then the little face. Uh, yeah, I, like, just, oh my God. You're it so cute. melted my heart. I was like, oh, because we'd so seen, cute. like, for the, the couple of episodes before that, we'd seen him be, you know, totally heartbroken and right. shutting down and, you know, trying to push Callum away, but to right. see him back to normal, like, well, back to being all soft <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was so cute I, I loved it well and I I think that last the last few minutes of the Monday's episode were my favorite when Ben runs in and there's um, there's no dialogue because they don't need it you know there's yeah. just his look of relief and Callum's look of relief and then him kind of yeah. like awkwardly going up the aisle and then the shrug and yeah, then the, no, the non-verbal communication between Max and Tony and their scenes together is just, yeah. I think, obviously, we spoke about this last week. Right. It's just incredible. Yeah. They're very nuanced mm-hmm. actors. They're very subtle. Yeah. And their, their um, projection, whether it be with a tone of voice or their body language or whatever, they're just, they're very, very good. Yeah. And, that's why I love watching them so much. They've got mm-hmm. so much chemistry together yeah. on screen. It's hard to look away. Yeah, and and what I love too was how sparse the dialogue was. Like it don't matter, nothing matters. You came. Yeah. It was like perfectly delivered, perfect. You know, 
and, and kind of a callback to that fl the flat kiss that yeah. everybody loved where you know Ben's apologizing for being late and he says it don't matter you know and so there's there's just so many parallels yeah. because Pete wrote some of the really big Bellum yeah. episodes and you just see all the callbacks which yeah. were amazing. They were really really spoiled with the parallels. Oh my gosh yeah. And was... those last two weeks we really did get a lot mm -hmm. and it was just it was I don't think it could have been written any more perfectly no. than it was it, mm -hmm. it was just so perfect I was I wasn't disappointed by it at all I, did, I wasn't disappointed that that Ben wasn't wearing a suit uh, no. about it you know no. like disappointed me I loved every, everything about it. I just thought it was tremendous. Yeah. Well, and, and let's go into the uh, the overall thing a little bit here. Because I kind of said during the week on my Twitter, because I saw some people just kind of like poo-pooing it. And I thought, it's absolutely perfect to me. Because, you know, Harry's Ben used to wear his overalls all the time. I know that we haven't seen Max yeah, that don't. much in the overalls. But, you know, we still know he works at the Arches. He owns the Arches. He's a mechanic and all that stuff. Yeah. So I did think it was a little bit of symbolism that, you know, Max's Ben came back a lot harder, a lot more, you know, some would say a little more ruthless, a little more, you know, with a hard shell, which like, why wouldn't he, you know, with all he's been through. But um, I thought it was kind of a callback to that he's the same Ben, you know, that it, it's kind of like he's, you know, and instead of going to a bar and like self-harming like he used to do, when he was upset, yeah. he went to go to work, you know, and I thought that was actually really good. That shows a lot of growth, you know, that, yeah. you know, instead of doing all the kind of really, really dangerous behavior he was doing, you know, when yeah. he was upset. It was in self-destruct mode when he yeah. came back. Yeah. And I know a lot of people hated initially, like, him, the new version of him when Max took over the role, but... I look back on it and I think, well, before, like, the last time we seen Ben, he was going on the run, he just stole that, right. you know, robbery money mm -hmm. um, and went on the run. And I don't think, I don't think he was even at that point 100% comfortable in his sexuality. No. But I think that when he came back, he, he was a lot more, you know, comfortable in his own skin. Because mm -hmm. he'd obviously been away for, for over a year and, you know, he would have had, you know, partners or boy, boyfriends mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's obviously spent all that time away from the drama of the square and right. and, and things like that. So it doesn't surprise me that he came back different yeah. and he came back with, you know, resent for Phil because, mm -hmm. you know, he, he had a right to feel resentful for everything. Yeah, it had happened in the previous years, leading up to you know mm -hmm. his exit in was yeah. it 2018, um, or 2017. 2017, yeah. I can't. Even, I didn't watch his exit. I watched it li like last year on YouTube. But yeah, I wasn't actually watching his senders at the time. Yeah, but I do think that you know they brought him back, and maybe he was too different for some people, but. As a writer, I think that it made sense. Yeah, I actually think it made perfect sense. And, you know, you and I stopped watching, I think, late 2016. We took the same break. Like, we've been watching yeah. a long time, really long time. Um, but then we took that same break, which tells you a lot about, like, how the show was going in those years, you know. And, and we kind of came back when, right before, um, in my case, right before the new Ben. And I wasn't really sold on him in the first month, which I can't even believe I'm saying now. And then I just absolutely fell yeah, in love I'm with the him. only one, because I, I wasn't watching when he came back in April. But I was seeing it on my timeline, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, oh, I don't like this new version of yeah. Ben want Harry back and yeah. things like that and I obviously thought oh well that must be not working out then yeah yeah little did we know <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like Harry who you know it's like you know Max is is just become his own version of Ben but it's all the, it's all the versions of Ben that he is now you know it's like it's a mixture of it's right. like it's like us all we're we're all a product of our, our right past. 
right. all the experiences we've went through, um, our memories, it, it makes us who we are. Right. You know, Ben did come back and he was very, very bitter and resentful and he had a lot of anger and, and rightly so. And, you know, and you see him now and obviously falling in love right. again. Right. You know, took that bitterness and that anger away. Right. And, he, and he's back to being, you know, who he's always been. Right. Um, I don't really see, I don't see the logic and the the p opinion that Ben isn't Ben because he has been. No, I mean, and a lot of that was a front when he came back. The, you know, the kind of, you know, uh, the bitterness, the, the heavy sarcasm, the wheeler dealer, you know, kind of image. And a, I thought him getting married in overalls kind of showed that he's kind of stripped down before Callum. You know, he's not afraid to be who yeah. he really is. And he doesn't show that side to many people. He shows it to mm -hmm. Callum. He shows it to Lexi, um, Lola, and okay. James. Lola. Lola and Jay see it. And that's about it. Sometimes even Kathy, he doesn't. And we saw that this week honestly, um, where he confided in Kat in a way he did not confide in Kathy. And I found that very interesting. Um, I love yeah. that to be. I think that it's a bit of foreshadowing yeah. that Ben and Kat are going to strike up a, a relationship yeah. of some kind. I do too. Because I think that Kat's going to be the one to bring Ben and Callum and Phil. Yeah also together again I do too. It, it will happen at some point yeah I mean, they're not going to be at, at odds with each other forever no and, and I think that Kat's definitely gonna going to play a big role in that um yep. because what I loved was you know Kat definitely like she tried to to calm the situation down and uh -huh. talk Phil around and uh -huh. you know and then she when she came back and she seen Ben and she just knew not to say anything yeah. in front of Kathy and right. just looked at Ben and Ben instantly knew, you know, mm -hmm. right. I just, I really loved that. And then when they did eventually catch up to Phil and, you know, he's, he's about to like go for Callum and, right. you know, and then Ben gets in in front and he starts trying to talk and um, sense into him. You mm -hmm. hear, and it, when it pans to Whitney, you still hear the conversation going right, on. Right. And your cat saying, you know, Phil, just listen to him. Yeah. So yeah. I really think that she's gonna be the one that that helps to build the bridges there. Yeah. And we predicted this last week. We were talking about Kate Mitchell, and I still think this is gonna come up somehow, yeah. but um it hasn't yet. But she was the one who delayed him going crazy enough for them to get married too. You know, she like, you know, got him out of the car and he was gonna head over there and she at least delayed it enough that they could get married and nothing happened at their wedding. Um so we did predict she'd be the one to talk him down and she you know she did in a way. Um yeah. you know and so uh, the other thing we predicted was that Whitney would go for Ben and get Callum, and we were right about that, but I didn't foresee the hit and run um, and that Kat was going to be involved, which was really a big wow. Um, yeah. So Whitney is just, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know it kind of makes sense that it was Kat that got hit because she's not involved in, in and yeah. situation. She's an outsider and right. she's got a connection to like a family type connection to mm -hmm. Whitney. So you right. know and I knew I just knew straight away that Kat was gonna cover for Whitney. Oh, because yeah. if she wasn't gonna cover for her, she would have told Phil who right. run her over. Right. Um so I just knew she was gonna going to cover for her. You know, right. I think Whitney's Whitney needs help because I don't yeah. think she's psychologically all there at the minute. No. I think I, yeah. she's that much has happened to that poor women like since childhood and I think it's just got to a stage where she's finally, you know, something's finally switched in her brain and because, you know, the Whitney that we've, we've come to know and love would never have done that no matter what no. the circumstances or, or the situation behind it. So I definitely think there's mental health implications behind that. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that's where they go with this because 
you know, she's getting to the point where you can't excuse, you know, what she's yeah. doing anymore. And, and even trying to hurt Ben, I'm like, you claim to care about Callum, but you're trying to kill his fiance, you know, or yeah. husband now is like, no. Um, so I just think, yeah, I mean, even Gray, like those scenes with Gray, where Gray's like, man, you're too, you know, he's sounding like the sane one, which is really <laughs> scary, you know? Yeah, that's uh, you know yeah, yeah, where you know it's really hit. I was making more even, sense to Yeah. <laughs> Even he's like, oh my God, lady. <laughs> and now I know, she, and I'm like, oh my God, if I'm actually agreeing with Gray. Then me too. Like, I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> this is really, <laughs> this isn't good. So I hope that's where they're going with this. Otherwise, it's like she's doing the damsel in distress thing and everybody covers for her again. And I just, yeah. that's not going to be interesting. Yeah, I think they should take it down the mental health route. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't doubt that Shona would smash it. Yeah. And the fact that it kind of makes sense when you think about her backstory. Yeah. You know, she's been through so much trauma in her, her life and she's not even 30 yet. And yeah. I just think that it would definitely, you know, get to, to a point where she, she flipped in some way. So yeah. it could be like I, a switch, you know, went off. Yeah. Um. I definitely think that it would make sense for for it to not for it to be a mental health issue and not just a a senseless revenge mm -hmm. thing um, yeah that's what i hope i just because really after leo i thought she'd made a lot of ground like i thought here's going to be her turning point you know with men and and it wasn't you know so i think this needs to be it i mean yeah, it's almost not it's almost good. killing our queen cat is not the turning point you know I'm just saying. <laughs> it's almost plowed down my four, four of my favorite East I know, I know, like our favorite characters. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. I know. Our, our, our two favorite couples, Fat and Balam. I mean, come on. Yeah, that, that would be where ships just wiped out. Yeah, so half of our instantly. ships. Half of our ships gone. Because, you know, Fat's totally happening. I loved the oh, film and cat. I love oh, film and cat. Yeah. Stella, I love it. Uh, so and much. we predicted, we thought, oh, they're going to get back. Because you could already see it, you know. And she's already, she's such a good influence on him already, yeah. you know. Even though, I mean, she was breaking through to him before the car hit. You know, she was getting through. Yeah, she, she was. She was talking him, him down. Yeah. And, and um, Ben was too. You know, he was yeah. saying, I, I love that because it wasn't this... I hate this Callum versus Phil narrative. I hate it. It's not the show doing it. I think other people are doing it. And I think it's the fandom that's yeah, doing it. It's the fandom that's doing it. The show is trying to make it that Phil can have them both in his life, you know? And even though Phil kicked him out, you know, kicked Callum out, which is understandable. I mean, if somebody's wiretapping you in your own home, especially Phil Mitchell, he's not going to let you stay. You know, yeah, I didn't expect him no. to just... no. Let bygones be bygones. Oh, no. no, that would have been. I mean, I do expect him to forgive at some point yeah. because yeah. he's forgave. As you have said in the past podcasts, he's forgave a lot over yeah. the years. Oh, yeah, a lot. So, <laughs> uh, like getting shot twice. twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> banged over the head the woman who he thinks banged him over the head he went to the hospital with was all upset and yeah, oh my, exactly. I, love the, I love those hospital scenes too that's just what we oh, wanted doesn't uh, it oh um, so, so I definitely think like I know everybody's celebrating yes Ben finally chose yeah um, over Phil and I did really like you know that scene and I liked that Ben says well if you know, you're chucking him out, I'm going to, because yeah. obviously does Phil expect Ben not to live with his yeah. husband? I mean, that's, yeah. Um, that's but just that, crazy. Yeah, no, that, that, that was an obvious thing, but the longer term stuff is not going to be that easy for, for Ben, you know. Yeah, definitely not. He's yeah. good. Ben's, I think Ben's going to be torn over yeah. the fact that, you know, this, he's pulled, he's had to pull away from from Phil right. and I, I mean I'm not saying that their relationship's not toxic and at times and you know that it's about time Ben literally chose his own happiness yeah. over pleasing his dad because that that was a long time coming right but um I also think that I also root for Phil and Ben yeah. to get to a place, but with a place like they were be right before, 
you know, the wedding. Right. Like, yeah. obviously the whole twist to the story is that, you know, they'd finally got to this place where Phil was fully, well, as fully as Phil could be accepting of Ben's sexuality and, you know, him letting Callum move in. I mean, that was pretty big. Oh, you know, To go from, like, yeah. not being able to even look at Ben kissing another man right. to actually allowing Ben's boyfriend to move in right. to the house. And I think people just overlook the character development. They really do. Um, I mean, it's like, it's been since the, in the last even year and a half, you know, as you said, when they were kissing in the kitchen and he like didn't want to see it, to telling Ben how proud he is that he's marrying Callum. I mean, that's like 18 months of insane yeah. character development, you know, and we really great. Last week about him, and Stuart, and it is very, very uh, true. Yeah, Stuart, um, I'm just going to get into Stuart, like, from almost killing Ben on Pride, let's face it. I mean, he nearly beat him to death, to being, like, smiling ear to ear. I just could not stop looking at Stuart and that his face. Uh, yeah, I couldn't winning. either. I just I was like, oh, that he's just beaming. Like, he's, you know, he just can't even. Yeah, um, he's so know. proud and, uh, and happy for Callum and. Yeah beautiful it's just beautiful to see and you know it, <laughs> i love stuart <laughs> so much because he put his foot in it oh my god i know <laughs> back time yeah and, like that scene with phil and stuart was amazing because uh, yeah. like, i mean for, i don't doubt that if phil was to was to have physically harmed callum you know that stuart you know that would have put Stuart and Phil against each other yeah um and I, lo I loved it when he said to Phil if you if you lay one finger on that boy I'll call you yeah. which I mean I think Phil even believed him you know because yeah, Stuart's because pretty his brother yeah Stuart can be pretty intense as we know um, I, can't, I wouldn't want to like as much as I wouldn't want to mess with Phil I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to mess with Stuart either. no actually Stuart I would be more afraid of because he just goes to that psycho play yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. uh, Phil might Phil's like he's hard but he's not like he's not mad but I think Stuart's no. a bit I mean, look what Stuart did to D.I. Thompson. Oh, my God. Stuart is not above. You know, we think he's changed, yeah. and he has for the better, but there's still that Stuart inside him, you know? Um, uh, and I just loved that scene so much, and I loved the scene when he came back yeah. into the recept uh, the registry office. Yeah. And he's, he's, she's trying to break it to Callum, and he's yeah. like, uh, don't hate me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Um, but you know what? It had to come out somehow because it's going to come yeah. out later. I still maintain Thompson's coming back or some, this is not over. There's going to be a whole new, you know, the, now this is going to be, you know, the tension between Ben and Phil, obviously, but I do think yeah. something else is going to come out. But I, like you said, I think Kat is going to be the one to, I mean, she's in the hospital right now, but if she'd been in that house, I think that would have been a totally different conversation, you know, um, not yeah. that Phil would have forgiven him or anything, but I think she would have talked him down a little bit. Um, so I think she's going to be really good for him and I'm so happy they're back together. I'm thrilled. Um, you yeah. know, and that's, that's amazing. I'm thrilled about that, but I'm also intrigued about Kathy's reaction. Yeah. She, I saw real jealousy. And yeah. I saw, ge I, I saw jealousy there as well. Yeah. And I've seen what, Obviously, you said that on Twitter and people yeah. weren't agreeing, but I agree, definitely. Yeah. It was the first thing that came through my head when I watched it. Yeah. Was, um, I think Kathy's a bit... Like, if she was completely and utterly not caring about it, then yeah. she wouldn't have had that reaction. Yeah, not the action, and, and not t stopping talking about it either. Yeah. Know? Well, you and I remember Kathy and Phil's relationship, and I think that's the big thing, you know. I actually adored Phil and Kathy yeah. together so, so much, cute. and from the minute she came back in 2015, I was so hoping that they were going to reunite yeah. sometime down the line. Yeah. And I think that's still a possibility. I mean, I know that he's with Kat, and I love him and Kat together. And yeah. Excited to see where their relationship 
goes and how it progresses. But I do think that I do think that the writers and the producers would be like a bit silly not to touch on Phil and yeah. Kathy again at yeah. some point because you like they were iconic in the nineties and then obviously they killed Kathy off off right. screen, but. Right. They've brought her back, so there's this opportunity there to to revisit it at some point. I mean, they don't have to get back together and get uh, married or whatever, but to have them like maybe I don't know have something happen between them again down the line sometime, I'd be all for it. You well, know, it's very realistic. I mean, it doesn't mean that you want to get back together with the person, but you can kind of go, uh, you know. And, you know, because Kathy or Kat is younger, you know, she's like 20 years younger, um, yeah. you know, and, and I think she's kind of like, ah, you know, like there's just a little bit of jealousy there. Um, and it doesn't mean that she necessarily wants to get back together with Phil and, you know, they've got a lot of water under the bridge and stuff. But I do think there's some jealousy, just like there's always been jealousy between Kathy and Sharon. You know, there's always yeah. been that tension. Um and a lot of it was over Phil. So I'm just saying, I think there was some jealousy there. And yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And um, I definitely think that we haven't seen the last of that, no, to be honest. I don't either. I think there's going to be, especially because I think Kat's going to be so good for Phil. And, you know, Sharon, she never really liked for obvious reasons. And they've always been kind of a car crash together. But I think Kat and Phil are going to actually make some sense. And you know, as much as I always love Sharon and Phil together for the drama, they're just not good for each other. Whereas I think oh. Kat and Phil can be. Yeah, I think Kat's good for Phil. Um, yeah. She's, she can, she's feisty. Yeah. She, she can tell him like it is. I mean, and I know Sharon can too, but there's, there's just something about yeah. Kat that I think she's more, more matched to Phil yeah, personality-wise than Sharon ever has yeah. I do. I think so too. I mean, Sharon used to stand up to Phil, but that has not been a recent event, you know. And also, I think she likes the lifestyle. Cat doesn't care so much, so I think she's gonna like kind of go toe to toe with him. I also think if Cat and Ben get close, that Kathy may get jealous over that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, she kind of sense. had those missing years with Ben, and Ben doesn't always confide in her. You know, a lot of times he doesn't, to be honest. And so that could be a jealousy thing, too, you know. That, yeah, that, definitely. That, you know, get um, with them. So I see all sorts of possibilities with that, and I love it. I just love it all. I just, you know. I do as well. I, I think that the storyline, you know, that that's that storyline well brought to some sort of closure now with yeah. it being, like, it, it being out and Callum and Ben being married. And right. I just think going forward... It's going to be interesting to see, you know, where where Ben and Callum end up living, where, yeah. you know, how things progress with Phil. Yeah. How long is it going to be before it, Phil starts to, you know, come around? Uh -huh. And I just, I'm looking forward to that, but I have really enjoyed, you know, the, the lead up to the wedding. Uh -huh. I've just enjoyed it so much. It was all beautiful, I thought. The other thing I loved, and we, we kind of touched on Stuart, was Stuart and Callum's scenes, where Stuart is being so supportive. Like, he couldn't even be Callum's best man a year and a half ago. You know, it was Mick, and Mick didn't want Stuart involved and all this stuff. Yeah. And now he's, like, right by his side. He's He doesn't want Callum to get hurt again. So he's a little like, well, you can call it off. But he supports him. You know, he goes yeah. there with him even when Rainey calls him and says, you know, we can still get our money back. And he's like, nope, as long as Callum's here, we're not doing it. So he was just so supportive. And I love that, you know. Um, yeah, I loved it as well that, you know, it was funny when they were saying their vows and, you know, Stuart just kept looking behind him. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just thought that Phil was going to smash through the yeah. door like the Hulk anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Which could have happened, let's face it. If had had a... Yeah, you could tell that, that that's what he was waiting for. Yeah. And I was kind of waiting for it as well, but I was also kind of waiting for, for like, Psycho Whitney to show up with uh, a yeah. knife. And yeah, I mean, it could have been either old, one. Old style, you know. Like, oh, I know. 
I know. Screaming down the aisle. To- <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, this way, you know, Callum doesn't know it was her, you know, and how is, how long is he going to know? Like, how long is that going to take before he finds out, you know, yeah. and everybody That's finds out? It's interesting because it's going to put Callum in a, a tough position again yeah. between Ben and Whitney, kind yeah. of. But, um, like, because I don't, I don't, like Callum said, you know, in the vows, like obviously they mentioned honesty and, and Ben forgave Callum for, you know, lying about the undercover thing and everything. But I think that if Callum finds out that it was Whitney, he should tell Ben straight away. Yeah, yes. Uh, I don't want him to keep that from no, him. No, not at all. I mean, that is going to be like a huge thing. Um, cause you know, again, she could have killed Kat, she could have killed all of them. And yeah, um, there was that kind of line during this, the, uh, reception where Stuart said, you know, your lot is going to have to take this really seriously because Kat's in the hospital. And I thought that was kind of a foreshadowing that Callum yeah. might be the one to find out at work, maybe, you know? Um, yeah, I think Callum is going to find out pretty quickly Yeah, because of the position that it puts him in. You yeah. know, being, being a police officer and, yeah. you know, um, being married to Ben and then obviously his history with Whitney. So it's going to put him in an awkward position again. So Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, again. Um, but yeah, I think, and we, I think we can agree that, that uh, our Queen Cat and our Queen Lexi were the Queens of the Week. Yay, Queens of the Week. Yay. Saved the whole thing. Yeah, literally <laughs> like... <laughs> If it wasn't for Kat and Lexi, there yeah. would have been a bloodbath yeah. at the wedding. I yeah. don't think there would have been any vows. Yeah, or... there wouldn't have been any vows. <laughs> and so we love it. It's like, you know, we just, we give them all the credit in the world for um, bringing them together. So they're happy for now. And let's just take that, <laughs> you know, because. Yeah, just, let's take that and run with it. Let's take that and run with it because there's going to be plenty of angst coming. Yeah. Up. And obviously I'm looking forward to the angst, but yeah. I think it feels different knowing that they're married because, yeah. you know, it, it's, it makes them stronger in a way. Right. Because, they're united and yeah. you know, a, a united front. Yeah. Like Callum said in his, his vows, that never to forget that I am us. I thought yeah. that was beautiful. That yeah. Was Pete killing us with the vows. Oh, Pete. The, the vows were just uh, absolutely... Uh, Honestly, God, if I ever get to write dialogue, even 1% I know. as good as that, I'll I be know. happy. I know. Well, and then Darren just killing it at the end of the week with, you know, all the Violet banter. Um, and let's not, for, let's not overlook that Violet was sobbing during that wedding. Let's just not overlook that because I feel like that got a little overlooked too. This yeah, week. she was. She really... Oh, she was like... Yeah, you know, she was really emotional. She was. And then even when she gave them, you know, gave Callum the money and stuff, I mean, she's still being prickly, but she's, you know, she's kind of saying, oh, you know, because he was like, I know it's a lot for you, like two guys getting married. And she's like, oh, you, your generation, all that, you know. So your generation she, didn't invent sex. Yeah. So she seems to have like lightened up. But I loved all of Darren's banter with, you know, he writes such great, like that kind yeah. of, you know, um, he's just a great writer for Eastern Yeah, Eastern. I loved that by Callum and Stuart scene. Yeah. It was great to see their family dynamic, um, like. I know. Like, Stuart and Callum's non-verbal community. Yeah. <laughs> and I said that she was great. sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so great. As a, and Vi, we win. We win this week. We got Fat back. We got Callum married. We got Violet staying. Just so much good stuff this week. I mean, it's just like, you know. We yeah, just, we definitely were, were spoiled. Yeah. And, so- and last week, as you know, Ben stands and the Balam fan. Yeah. We were really spoiled with and, them. And fat stands, cat stands. We mm-hmm. were like, all of our standing. Wait. <laughs> yeah, all of our faves. All of our faves were at least having no cats in the hospital, but she's okay. That's all I care about. Um, she's okay. She's going to be okay. She's going to be all right. She's going to feel good. Phil's going to look after her. So it's all going to be good. What did you think of Jean's reaction to Phil and Kat? I, you know, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, 
I, she's not going to be thrilled. I, I just never thought she would be thrilled about it. Mm. But, you know, I was like, eh, it's pretty standard, I think, because nobody knew what was going on, you know. Um, I did love Jean and her little balloon. But, um, you know, I just, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I thought it was pretty standard issue. I wouldn't yeah, have it was, really it happy, was definitely a slater reaction. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it going any other way. You know, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I don't think she's gonna be really thrilled. Um, <laughs> but we did get, um, you know, so I think the Bellum wedding, two thumbs up from us, like we love it, right? Yeah, it was all definitely, good. like, but, yeah, <laughs> all good. It um, was just, I can't put into words how much I loved it, really. It was fantastic. But we do, we are gonna move on because we did have several other stories this week, you know, even though the we wedding. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> we did, and they were really good too because we love the Taylors here. Um, and I, I love them kind of looking for Bailey, um, and then her um, running into the old friend of Dina, you know, um, Bailey's mom. Um, yeah. So you know, like we get Reg who um, is seeing them, you know, um, or seeing Bailey um, on his way. I, I guess she goes back to the estate. She gets her bag stolen by those awful kids. And then Banjo, you know, they hurt Banjo. So Banjo runs away. And, I know. Oh, poor Banjo. Poor dog. Oh. See when she gave um, the dog our biscuits. I know. That actually just, broke my heart. This child is killing me with her dog. I swear, they just, I love them so much. And the poor Taylors, I mean, they're just doing everything to try and get her back. And, um, you know, then the banjo go, goes back to them, thank God. So at least they know, you know, they have yeah. him. Um, but they're still trying to find her. And then Reg calls uh, Mitch, I believe, because he knew Mitch too. Um, he calls Mitch and, but can't get Bailey to stick around. I mean, she's a smart girl and she knows that, you know, he says he's called the, um, the animal rescue place, but of course he's called, you know, Mitch and Karen and, you know, they, they run to where Reg is and of course you know Bailey's gone by that time but um I think the turning point for Bailey was when the the other woman tried to take her money um and yeah. then it's like okay I need to go home you know like nothing is working out here so who interferes but our Amy Mitchell who just in uh, proper Mitchell fashion yeah Amy is really her mother's daughter <laughs> isn't she she's just <laughs> yeah um, she she has uh, yeah she, through and through. I see a lot of Roxy in her, um, which is maybe why Jack's so mad all the time. I don't know. <laughs> like, I gotta raise these Mitchell kids. I don't know. Um, yeah. But you know, she stopped jumping into bed with all yeah, of them. Yeah, I know. Oh, Jack is Jack, Jack is, cool. is really a hypocrite when it comes. He to is such a hypocrite. Getting but, on Callum about that. I know. What well, I would really love a scene where he actually talks to Callum about look. I've been involved with all these Mitchell women and I know what it's like, like a heart to heart would be fine. But the, like, you love the Mitchells, like, you know, pointing finger thing doesn't work for me. It's like, if he said, you know, really honestly, like, look, I know what the heartache is to be involved with the Mitchells. That would be fair, you know, because yeah. he's been involved with three of them, you know, Sam, Roxy and Ronnie. But, um, <laughs> you know, since he's never really done that, I'm just like, oh, I can't, you know, anyway, Jack is just, uh. but anyway, getting on to Amy, she is just like, you know, her mother's daughter, she's manipulating, you know, Bailey and telling her that, that the, you know, Karen and Mitch are so mad at her, which is not true, of course, and gets her to hide out in the allotment where nobody's going to look. Nobody looks in the allotment ever. <laughs> no, after all the years of people <sighs> hiding there, you would think that in the first place that they would check. It's like when Martin hid the burner phone after the Keanu stuff in the allotment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. It's like, you people. Oh. Martin's like the worst hat man ever. <laughs> I mean, it's good that he is, but still. Yeah, no. It's a good thing. <laughs> no. You know what? Ben hired an actual proper hat man yeah. to go for Billy, yeah. but yet he chose Martin Fowler to I get know. Keanu. Yeah, that that goes back to my theory. Ben, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. That goes back to my theory that Ben really didn't want it to go through with it, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's all, yeah. But anyway, so she, no one's going to look for her in the allotment, right? Okay. So <laughs> but Amy it keeps manipulating her because, you know, Bailey's like, oh, maybe I should go back. I don't know. And she's bringing her food and stuff, but Amy is not going to be in a good place where they find out what she's done because, um, you know, that's kept her from them for another at least few days. Um, yeah. You know, Amy's and just, she's been really manipulative and, yeah. and selfish about Bailey. Yeah. And I don't know why exactly. I'm like, why is this such a big deal like I, don't I think it's maybe because the attention's not on her yeah that's what I was gonna say like Jack is really worried about Bailey like he's really upset and I think that's maybe you know he's kind of snapping at Amy oh well you said you need to pull your weight around here I think he's kind of snapping at her because he's she's not getting the attention she's trying to get it so yeah, you're probably right that it's you know, an attention seeking thing, but yeah, not going to work out well for her. Um, no, you know, when not. hopefully Bailey comes back. But I just she breaks my heart that child. She's just such a sweet girl, and yeah, I love know. her. She's she's adorable. And that poor family. I mean, you know, like the scene where they're trying to like Kathy says, "Oh, the Taylors don't pay in the cafe." It's a nice gesture, but it's like again, don't make yeah. me feel like the drags of the exactly. Square. It doesn't really help. No, the no. situation. No, it really doesn't. Um, you know, and it's like, ugh, yeah, I, I just, I kind of don't know. You know, sometimes Kathy can be a little like that. You know, where it's like, like when she had the Slaters over for Christmas, the Christmas before last um oh uh, yeah <laughs> you know, kind of a little the charity thing you know going on yeah. there's nothing wrong with that but it's like it's got there's a way to do it did the slaters not end up with three christmases that year? those scammers <laughs> they did <laughs> they did We're, yeah they went to three different christmases it was like <laughs> oh my god and the only place they didn't go was the mitchell house because it was being torn up by sharon and phil so uh yeah. <laughs> they didn't go there. but yeah so i'm, I'm just i'm loving the taylor storyline um I'm, I'm loving all of it because again you know it kind of feeds into bernie wanting to help her family and the surrogacy storyline and we did get i love the rainy and bernie scenes i think they're really good together um you know and and just yeah. this kind of talking in the the doctor's office um it surprises me that bernie didn't have to divulge she'd had a miscarriage before um with bernie and uh, with uh rainy and stewart but you know um it has come up now so yeah. i'm wondering if rainy is gonna have second thoughts you know yeah or if it bernie looks is, like she's she's yeah. um, and you can't really blame her because you know this is their one shot yeah at, at getting the baby they've always wanted so right. you know as they, they'll they see that as a big risk yeah yeah I think that's true and you know she may talk to Stuart about it and um you know you can see like yeah I, I'm not sure where the doctor was going with that Bernie's overweight so she had a miscarriage I thought that was like that too cool but um I you know you do see Bernie's like kind of attempts to like like she's starting to eat a sandwich and she throws it away. So I don't yeah. know if there's going to be like a weight loss, like eating disorder storyline going on here. I don't know. I feel like there's, yeah. you know, there's something happening, you know, but as we say on EastEnders, not everything is foreshadowing. So, you know, maybe, maybe, it's <laughs> yeah. enough, maybe you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> Not everything is. Some lines yeah, are just I, I just thought it was, you know, it would be it would be so tragic for Ben if the theory about Callum yeah. having some sort of delayed reaction to the yeah. I, I know. hit and run. But yeah. I don't that's not gonna happen. No, no, we know we know Tony and uh, Max are staying for, I mean, they've said they're staying for as long as, I think Balam will go as long as, as long as they stay, to be honest. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't think there's anything to that, but yeah, not everything is foreshadowing. So we don't know if Bernie is, is quite gonna, you know, end up doing it if she decides it's not for her. I mean, the problem is that she, they really need the money and she thinks this is the only way to get it, you know, or get a big chunk of money anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 glad they're still continuing with the storyline and I'm kinda curious where they'll 
where they'll go with it. Um, so I was really enjoying that. I love the Sharon and Nancy and Zach dynamic. I did not see how good that was going to be. Um, but I thought yeah, this was I love great. That as well. um, and, you know, Nancy's now living with Sharon. Another thing I did not foresee. <laughs> um, they they uh, are giving us a lot that we just haven't been able to predict. Yeah. Which is good because I don't, I don't like it when it's too predictable. It's yeah. too easy to yeah. get where, where things are going to go. Right. Um, I'm not on board with Sharon and Kira. No, I'm not either. I was just going to say that. Not. We like a lot of ships here. So the people Sharon and Kira, yeah. Yeah, and I think we said that before. Like, And I love Kira, like, and I love Sharon. Yeah. I just don't want I, them together. I just, you know. yeah. yeah, and it's not age at all. I mean, I'm like, Sharon is a year older than I am. So full disclosure, we're about the same age. Um, I grew up with Sharon, so I don't care. Like, go, go for your younger man. I'm all for it. But I just think Kira is too close to the Mitchells. There's going to be all this Suki stuff. You just know that's going to be a thing. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I actually don't, I don't know that they have, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about just, their, their chemistry? Because I don't feel it. I, I don't, don't feel it, yeah. um, to be honest. Yeah. I just don't think they're well matched. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would never have put no. them together and yeah. ever myself. So... I just personally don't buy it. Yeah, it just feels very kind of out of the blue for me. Um, I thought he obviously with Chantel had amazing chemistry. I mean, I thought that was that was the love story we never got, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I thought he and Stacy had good chemistry. Um, yeah, I, I really little... enjoyed his scenes with Stacy. Yeah, I think if Lacey never went on maternity leave, they might have went down yeah. that. Lord. Yeah, I do think they might have, at least for a while. Um, I do think Carrot has some mommy issues. Um, and again, like Sharon and I are almost the same yeah. age, so I'm not saying anything about, you know, the age difference. I just think yeah. he likes women that are like his mom, and Sharon is a little like Suki, you know? So maybe that's a thing. Um, yeah, it's not really a good thing. No, it is not a good thing. It is not a good thing at all. Um, so we may be the only people who don't like Shirat or whatever they're called. Yeah, and <laughs> but, obviously we love Balam and there's people out there that hate Balam, so. Yeah, not, I mean, they're, they're, love them all. yeah, I mean, we, I mean, Balam are the more popular ones. We loved Fat from the beginning. A lot of people didn't, but now they're on board because they're so good together. So yeah. I'm just saying. Like Phil, oh, Phil and Kat. I pretty much liked them straight off. Yeah, we like them straight off here. We were like, we were calling it before it happened. So, yeah. you know, there was a lot of chemistry. I just, I, I want to like Sharon and Carrot, and I don't. And I also feel like he's too close to the Mitchells. It's just going to be this whole big thing that I don't want to really see. Um, but yeah. again, you know, I don't know. But I hated Shiano too. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> like I, I hated Shiano. Uh, with passion I know and I'm not I just really like, thought it was ecky you know yeah. yeah and again it's not the age difference for me because you know but for me it's I re I didn't really like Keanu that much full disclosure but I love Kirit I would just like to see him in a relationship that's not like this I guess just you know yeah. um I don't know who would be good for him I'm trying to even think who on the square would be I think he needs somebody really emotionally secure you know sort of secure um, and stable, like he's not going to be one. Like Whitney, no, it would be so the wrong person for him. <laughs> no, not Whitney. He couldn't, he couldn't deal with the drama. He couldn't deal with all that. But I'm trying to think, like, who would be good for him on the square? And I can't really think of anyone right now. But you know, if Lola was single, yeah, God, that would be amazing. Since he Lola. tried to kidnap her, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all starts with a kidnap. Yeah, it does. It all starts with a kidnap and then turns to love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, actually, they would be good together. That would be kind of amazing if that would yeah. happen. <laughs> um, I, like, the age thing with Sharon and Kira and Sharon and Keanu, it does, personally, it kind of makes me feel wicky, you know, that age difference. But it, it's just down to personal opinion, mm -hmm. but I definitely think that that Kira and Sharon don't. 
go well on paper or on screen to be honest i mean i you know again i'm you know around sharon's age so i'm fine with it it's it's not the age difference to me it's just i don't really see them together you know i don't know i don't know what it is um and everyone else is like squeeing over their chemistry so we're maybe we're wrong but i just see it going badly for carrot i guess yeah you know what i mean like i don't know well as i said you know we can't all have the same opinions and no. i'm sure that well and I, I know that a lot of people disagree with my opinions on twitter uh -huh. because they make it clear so <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can't all love the same ship. So for now, we're we're skeptical, I guess, is what we're saying. But um, I do think whoever Kirit gets is going to be a lucky woman because he's a real smoother smoothie, isn't he? Uh, oh, I think he's great. Uh, I would... Mm. I yeah. love Kira. I love Kira so much. Like I can't even describe. I loved him when he was kidnapping Lola and threatening Lexi. Like that's how much I love him. I just think he has incredible chemistry. Like yeah, so I love his scenes with Ben. Yeah, they're well. they're amazing together. Yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, I'm not one of these people that think Ben and Kira should all of a no. sudden. <laughs> it on, but I love their chemistry yeah, on screen together. But, they have a great bromance for sure. I always wanted that because they have so much in common. I just thought, oh, this will be a great match, and it really has been. They've been, they've been. Amazing. Yeah, I hope we get to see more of that. Yeah, and I think we will now that you know Ben for now has stepped away from Phil. He's going to have to do more stuff with Kirit, I think. So that will be great actually to see that. Yeah, um, I'd, like, I think so too. Yeah, and I did love the Nancy and Mick scenes this week. I just thought oh. they were so beautiful. Um, yeah, great, great acting by Maddie and and Mick. And and you know when she's she knows she's about to have a seizure, and she gets Albie in the the playpen before and calling Mick. And then when he comes over and they talk about you know her epilepsy and 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 she can yeah. talk to him to Mick in a way she cannot talk to Linda. You know. Um, that she can open up and say, you know, this is what I think happened with Tamwar and, you know, why we, why we drifted apart and he wanted kids and I didn't. And, you know, yeah. and I just, she could open up to him in a way that she really can't talk to Linda because Linda's. Yeah, always definitely. That, that was really, really, really well done that scene as well. Yeah, I love that. And, and, and performance and yeah. the chemistry that, that Danny and Maddie have. And yeah. I just loved that scene. I thought it was beautiful and it, it brought a tear to my eye, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And I always think when I see like scenes like that between Mick and his children, like for example, the scene where Johnny came out and he was crying, mm -hmm. you know, to Mick about it and, you know, Mick's comforting him. Mm -hmm. That scene, some of the great scenes he's had with Lee over the mm -hmm. years. Yeah. I just think that Mick is the dads that yes. everyone deserves mm -hmm. like personally you know myself not having a good father figure in my life well my stepdad was okay but my my dad was not and I just when I see scenes like that with Mick and his children it just makes me think wow that's yeah. a proper parent you know yeah you, uh a good parent as yeah well and um, we were talking before about ben and and um lexi's relationship and what a great father-daughter relationship oh, yeah. but mick and nancy and mick and frankie are yeah. up there too i mean they're amazing um ben and lexi i literally like adore ben and lexi's uh, relationship i love it's it so just, it's so sincere mm -hmm. it's well, just incredible he treats her like an adult you know, because she is a little adult in a lot of ways, you know, she's a yeah. precocious child and, and she would be being Ben and Lola's kid, but um, she's also very, very mature when it counts. Yeah, she's, you know? she's a bit, she's a little mini, mini me. Yeah. Mini she? Yeah, she's just so good. <laughs> but yeah, I just, Nancy, I just think Mick is like the best dad on the square, just whole, bar none, you know, I just, yeah, I think he's just such an amazing dad. And you need, 
because there's plenty of not great fathers on that square, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. People, people who try their best but just aren't, you know, or people that are just terrible dads, but, you know, just so if there were terrible moms and, you know, but he's kind of the Mick to, like, Karen, I think, is the best mother. I think Mick is the best Yeah. Dad, you know, because he just not do anything. And yeah. obviously, I think Ben's right up there. Yeah, I agree. As well. Yeah. Um, I love that Ben... Because because of Ben's fraught relationship with Phil, you know, he's made sure that he's not going to have that type of relationship with his daughter. Right. He's broke the cycle, and I think right. that's that's really great. And it's really great to see that on screen as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like just yeah. because your parents treated you a certain way and their parents treated them a certain way, it doesn't mean that you have to continue that you yeah. know yeah and and he really has because phil had that relationship with eric you know his father he had a little better relationship with phil but still still pretty lacking and then we get this relationship with lexi which is like you know a total 180 um yeah so it's really been like great progression in the mitchell family too yeah, of course and even like well callum's our stepdad now and you know the dad that he grew up with you know he yeah. he gonna be right an amazing stepdad to Lexi I've no doubt about that right and this is like the family he's always wanted and never really had you know and yeah. oh. so it I just love, makes I love me it. so happy that I know I know really what the family deserves I mean and Stuart's included in that as well because yeah. Stuart as yeah. you know He's always there for Callum. Right. Yeah. Who would do anything for him. And, and Rainey too. I mean, he, yeah. you know, whenever you see their interaction, she really loves Callum. And, um, Even know. their grandmother, you can tell she, I mean, she might yeah. say things that you think, oh God, but you know, she proved that she loves him and Stuart. You know, she went to the wedding. She got emotional. Right. She, she gave him a, present she yeah. I just think I do think that she's going to be a nurturing influence yeah, yeah. for and Callum yeah if she's around long term yeah um and I, I really hope that she has a lover because I want to see you know her and Ben form a, a bond as well mm-hmm. I just want to see more scenes with her and Ben I know <laughs> that's just like comedy gold right there yeah. but yeah, but I do think that she's kind of one of those grandmothers that deep down she loves you, but she's like prickly as hell, you know, kind of thing where, you know, yeah. and she's got a really hard shell. But then if if push comes to shove, she will like defend you like a tigress with her cub, you know, kind of thing. So, um, yes, of course, um, definitely. I just think that she's a really good addition to oh, the highway. She's amazing. I. When they said she wasn't leaving, I mean, we knew she was going to be kind of permanent, but I was like, oh, thank God. She's staying and raining. I, I, I was, like she raining. was like, after the wedding, it's like, <laughs> right? And she's, a, she's a, an old elderly lady, and he's like, I walk you to the tube yeah. station. <laughs> I was like, um, how rude. I know, but you know, honestly. <laughs> No, but honestly, I, you know, having a, a grandmother kind of like this, I can see <laughs> you're like, okay, grand, you got to go now. You're making everybody crazy. <laughs> I, love, I loved her and the, the Albert, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk about how our neighbor asked her what happened to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone tried to sell her poppers in the bathroom. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, this is so good. She's going on about the cake, which yeah. one's up and which one's... I know, oh my god. Was like god. choking on his food. <laughs> she was fed the banter. Was that again? That was she was, she yeah. was the comic relief. Oh yeah, that we needed because there yeah, was... No, she was it. just... <laughs> she yeah. made me laugh so much amongst my tears. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we needed that because not only did we have the wedding, we had the ba- you know, we had the tailors, we had, you know, Nancy and Sharon and Zach, which can be kind, of, which can be fun. But then Nancy had the, you know, the return to her, you yeah. know, Lefty storyline, and so there was a lot of heavy this week, um, you know, and so it was good to have that to break it up a little bit, um, and and so I just thought I'm going to give full five 
full five travel mugs this week. I thought it was fantastic. Um, yeah, definitely full house for me. Full yeah, it just, five for me yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I mean, just no- I've watched this the scenes like the the Balam scenes from this week about a hundred times already. Like yeah. I just thought it was incredible. Yeah, it was really good, and it looks like the next few weeks are going to be great. Like I think we've got. Sonya's storyline coming up. We've kind of got the continuation of, of the Taylor. So there's going to be a lot of good stuff um, in the next few weeks that we're really excited about, um, which is going to be great too. So we usually do dialogue and performance of the week. I'm going to go with, um, I know it's going to be really hard because like we're just going to pick, you know, basically probably Ben and Callum, but for performance, I'm going to give it to Max, Tony, Steve, and Jesse because I thought they all interacted so well. Like I can't really pick yeah. apart you know, how well they all interacted with each other, you know, kind of Phil and Kat, Phil and Ben, Ben and Callum, you know. So I just thought there was, um, I'd give it to like that four, the ensemble of four kind of thing. Um, and then for dialogue, um, I am going to go with the the Ben and, and uh, Lexi scene for my, I think everybody's going to pick the vows. Like we did a Twitter poll this week of like, what was your favorite part of the Bell and Wedding and the vows mm-hmm. won by a pretty handy margin. Um, Cause we had like the vows, the Phil, Callum and Ben scene, the kiss and then Ben and Lexi. Um, but for me, I thought it was the Ben and Lexi scene for the, for the dialogue. And that was of course the great Pete Lawson. So do you have dialogue or can you, can you even pick dialogue and performance this week? Oh. Um. Uh, good question. I think performance. I'm I'm gonna give it to Tony and Max mm-hmm. and Jesse as well mm-hmm. because I just thought their scenes were incredible. I mean, the confrontation scene between Callum and Phil was great. Yeah. Um, you know, to- like Tony's voice breaking yeah. during the vows and. You know that line about Ben, you know, picking him up piece by piece, and mm-hmm. you know, I loved that line, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, Ma- Max's dialogue with Lexi was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just like the, the entire like the vows and and Ben and Lexi scene was my favorite mm-hmm. for dialogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just, I think those scenes were really the best. And you can't just, you can't pick, because we we even picked up the, the smaller scenes that were just incredible this week. Like even the scene where, um, uh, you know, um, Callum and, and Stuart are in their bathrobes, and, and yeah. Stuart is trying to calm his nerves by tell him, telling him about the wedding night with Rainy. And that was just like a little scene, but I loved it. It was so supportive. Yeah, and, and the scene where Kathy comes in and, and tries to get Phil to talk to Ben and yeah. Ben's sitting in the stairs crying. Yeah, yeah. there was just oh, that, that yeah. was oh I know. There were just so many. Well. It was just the whole week. It was just incredible. Um and we got we got so much of what we wanted and a lot of what we predicted, which is kind of scary. We're like thinking like you know, probably could was yeah. watching so long we can predict some of the stuff, but then <laughs> some of it we didn't see, like the big hit and run. And what we will give a little touch a little bit on Whitney and Gray. Huh. <laughs> yeah, if um, that hit and run wasn't spoiled in the trailer. No. That would have literally that would have been a jaw dropping moment oh for me. Oh my god. I okay. kind of wish it wasn't spoiled because that that would have been like a edge of the seat moment. Yeah, although I don't think we really saw Kat being in the in the way there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was incredibly, you know, well done. And um, yeah, but that spoiler was incredible. I mean, the uh, the trailer was incredible because it was just like, you know, as you yeah, it, it it obviously it spot it teased us really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, it really did. We're like, oh my god, what's gonna happen next? Um, so yeah, we did see some of it coming even before the yeah, you know, we said it in the last uh show what we saw coming, and we we're right about quite a bit of it, but then there was a lot of it that we we're like, whoa, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so they can still surprise us even with you know social media and everything else. Um, yeah. but it does, it does look like Gray is kind of done with Whitney, but personally, I think he's just saying that so that she'll come back. Yeah, no. I don't think he's done with her. Far from it, really. No, no. Um, he's definitely. Yeah. You know, 
I just want Whitney to come to her senses, you know, that know. that's the thing she had with Kat and the hospital. I yeah. hope that kind of like I hope that's planted a seed of doubt in her mind about it being the Mitchells that were involved in and Cushy's death. Right. Um because I mean I don't want that to drag out for too long. No. Yeah, because it's it's been a while now, and and I think you know I don't know who's going to be the one to discover him, but now with the ca the car being under investigation, that's a whole new level of. Yeah, I'm he, just thinking fingerprints. Yeah, fingerprints all over it. DNA, Tina's but DNA. Then again, this is he. <laughs> yeah, it's the wall for police. So. Yeah. The police are very. <laughs> Get it off jobs. No, it's the Walford police, so God only knows. Uh, <laughs> what's we, might, we might be waiting a long time for, be for to actually get some justice. To yeah, be we could, yeah, we could be. I mean, you know, we just don't know. I'm not in a hurry because I know it's going to come, you know. And, yeah, and cool. sometimes these things take years. I mean, to be honest, if you want to be really yeah. realistic, a lot of these people don't get caught, you know. And I know it doesn't That's seem true. fair, but it's it's realistic. Yeah. A lot of these people don't get caught till it's, you know, as far as everyone's concerned, he's the hero of the square and she's a crazy girl out for revenge, you know, and um, that's all anybody's yeah. going to see right now. So, you know, where this all goes, I'll be interested to see. Because um, we've, we've been predicting since, you know, qu since the beginning of doing the show is that we thought Whitney would be the one to discover Gray, but it might be Callum. Like, we just have no idea at this point. Yeah, um, at this point, I don't think I could predict it, to be no, honest. No. Because there's, there's been that many twists and turns that yeah. I literally, I've kind of lost my train of thought yeah. of where I thought it was going to where it's uh -huh. ended up. So, yeah. you know... It's, I suppose, you know, that's a good thing that it's not easily predictable. Because yeah. even we've been like really firing on these predictions, but even we get, you know, you know, surprised and, and don't always get it right here. Um, so that's a good thing because we've been doing well on sort of, you know, a lot of them, but then we go, wow, we didn't see that coming. So um, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're long, long, long haul EastEnders fans. So it's kind of hard to shock us at, at uh, some point, but they still do it, which is great. Yeah. So. I mean, after, you know, 30 odd years, I mean, that's a, a good feat. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And I did want to give a little shout out. We don't normally mention directors here because um, we're writers and we kind of focus on that, but uh, Colin O'Scaly, I think I'm pronouncing his uh, name right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm half Irish, but I'm not that good with <laughs> with uh, the pronunciations. But he was, was the director for the last two weeks, and he did all the Balam scenes, and what an amazing job he did. I mean, I thought they were gorgeous. Um, you know, beautifully yeah. directed the, the fights, the, the marriage, everything was just perfect. So I did want to give a shout out to him. Also, Jeremy, the celebrant, who I love. I love Jeremy. Oh, he, yeah. He, I he, love that it was him. And I almost forgot. He, he, was, a, he was the celebrant at um, Stuart and Rainey's wedding. He was the celebrant at Ben and Callum's. He has such a, like, sense of joy about him. I love him. He's, like, the perfect person to do a wedding. And I would love for him to come back and be a, like a regular character. I think he's so cute. Yeah. He just, just like, reminded me of Lexi's. Don't even think about it. Well, and he has, like, his face. Yeah. Jeremy's face that, that was funny. Yeah. And just his like look of joy. If you see the pictures of them, you know, when yeah. they're married, he just looks so happy. So I just think he's a lot of fun. He's a great character. And I would love to like for Denise and Jack's wedding or whatever yeah. we have coming up. I'd love to see him back. I think he's a really... So EastEnders, if you're listening, we like we love Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, we love Jeremy. We also love Tubbs. Tubbs yes. Tubbs. We've been asking for Tubbs back. I mean, come on. <laughs> this would be a perfect time because, you know, Ben's probably going to be away from Phil for a while. Bring Tubbs back, you know, to like yeah. do, do some. Gonna, I mean, Phil's going to feel it because. Oh, yeah. You know, he's going to be living in that house. Big house. Do you think Lexi and, and Lola will still live with Phil? I don't think so because I mean for Beck for Lexi to live with Ben, Lola has to be there. Um, it yeah. depends on what kind of like size house they get or what whatever flat or whatever they're doing. But Yeah. Um, well, as I said on Twitter, they do have seem to have extension charms when it comes yeah. to 
yeah. for the houses on the square. <laughs> yeah, they do for sure. But they need their own place. And like they, they make enough money for their own place. Come on, guys. Like Yeah, I'd um, like to I'd like to see them in in their own place. Yeah, I would too. So um you know, that depends. I don't see Lexi and Lola wanting to stay in a house where there's that much tension. I, I don't just, either. I think no. that Lexi will want to be wherever our dad and Callum are, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I do, I do too. I, and especially now that they're, you know, not talking, whatever's going to be happening, we don't want that. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, he's going to be alone in that big house. I mean, if Kat, you know, maybe... Yeah, I think Kat might end up moving in with I do too, with the kids, Yeah. I, I, I think that. that's where it's going, to yeah, be honest. I do too. Um, that's which I would be cool with, but he's gonna feel Ben's not being around. I mean, they have a a very um, complicated and and strong bond. No matter what happens, they yeah. all. You know, I mean, they're father and son. Well, and they've always just been. And I just love both. the whole Shakespearean element to it because yeah. I I literally loved Friday's scene when you know Phil said that Callum's not welcome yeah. in the house not now not ever yeah and Ben's like well if he goes I go yeah. and I was like oh my god that's so Shakespearean I yeah. love it yeah but it's you know it is going to be complicated going forward and so we'll just kind of have yeah. to see but I, I can't see Lola really wanting to be in the middle of that either you know um no, I don't either well I think Kat will move in with the kids and that'll keep him occupied for a while but uh, I don't think we're gonna have Phil on his own for too long no. because for the Mitchells there ha it has to be a big household of them right. there right. always has to be some drama going on oh yeah like, I think putting the Mitchells a Mitchell and a Slater together is just genius it is and we haven't seen like we said before we haven't seen that since Roxy and Sean so it's yeah. been a while you know and and this is like like a bigger deal to me really because it's the head of the Mitchell household and then you know yeah. Kat, Kat is one of the kind of one of the, the, the Slater matriarchs now so that's yeah. going to be like a, a real forging of the houses also very Shakespearean you know mm -hmm. um it's kind of like Game of Thrones <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> you know? um so I love it I just think it's going to be amazing but but yeah that'll be great to see how that all goes um so yeah, it's been a great week. We had a lot of really great news personally for the podcast. We're going to announce who the writer is next week. Yay! Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to have some more announcements about the show and um, you know do more more wrap ups. It'll be I think Ben and Callum will be on their honeymoon probably for a while. So um, we're going to move on to other storylines. But we did want to. Uh, I give mean, success as that I didn't drink alcohol during this podcast <laughs> and I didn't cry so didn't cry yeah we didn't we were we're all good because I think we got we got pretty much the outcome <laughs> we wanted you know yeah, um, it would have been a different story yeah. had it not gone yeah. Yeah, had it not gone, or or if Cat were not with us anymore, or something, we'd be like crying and that. Oh, I would be fuming. I would like. I would. Because that's not how it. you you write Cat Slater out of his sandals. No, you don't write Cat out of his sandals. We're just gonna say that. Yeah, now. exactly. That you don't write Cat out no. of it. No, but you don't do it that way. So I was pretty sure she'd be fine, but you just never know with these. <laughs> that's where it's gonna go. Um, but yeah, yeah, we just we pretty much got everything we wanted this week, and we're we're really happy. So and we're excited to bring more more exciting news to you. Yeah. Um, we are hoping we hit the thousand views by next week. It, we probably the way the rate we've been going, we probably will. So um, we will um, pick a winner um, probably before next week's show, and yeah. somebody will be the lucky recipient of the the lovely mug. And the the red bubble stuff looks great. I've just seen it online, but I did order a a cup for myself, so it does look. Yeah, amazing. I'll need to do that as well. Yeah, um, when I get a chance. Yeah, it's really um, there's some really nice stuff. I've got there. so many mugs. Like Emma Daly standards. I know. I know. Oh, like TV show mugs. I've got I so many. <laughs> I have so many. It's just like crazy. But you know, you can't have too many. Or you can have yeah. like a phone cover, whatever you want. <laughs> It's all there for you. Um, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be announcing that on our Twitter and also next week. So I think we're going to wrap yeah, up now. Next we, we actually... weekend as well, I'll be starting my Emmerdale podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'll be doing both of them. 
Wow. Like, I'll be doing this one on a Sunday and the the Emmerdale one on a Saturday, I think. Okay. Yeah, do you want to give everybody the name and all that good stuff? Yeah, it's called Dale View and the Twitter handle for it is Dale View Pod. Cool. So it's the Emmerdale podcast for anyone that watches Emmerdale. Yeah, because we probably have quite a few crossovers here. Like we have people that watch Corey and EastEnders, EastEnders and Emmerdale, maybe all three. So yeah, if you are, um, yeah. yeah, if you love this this show, you're going to love that show too. I don't watch Emmerdale, but I'm still going to listen because you're doing oh, it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'll still listen. <laughs> I don't know. I, can like, I don't them. explore what they're talking about. But... <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, I have enough friends who watch Emmerdale. I kind of know. <laughs> so, I think, obviously, me and my friend um, are doing it, and she's a big Tate fan. Mm. A big fan of the Tates. And I'm a big fan of the Jingles. So mm. <laughs> it will be interesting for sure. Cool. Yeah, so you have like double, double the fun now. <laughs> you have all the fun. Double, double duty. Yeah. I'm literally living and breathing soap operas at the minute. Yeah. I suppose like I should get used to it if I want to get into that industry. Yeah. So. yeah. It's good practice, you know, for yeah, cool. getting into it. So cool. Yeah. So we're going to have a lot of good stuff to um, announce again next week. Um, and I'm really excited about the July 4th show and interview. Um, so we'll let you go for now. We actually managed to keep it under, under time. I'm amazed. Oh, really? Yeah. It's about, about, about a little under an hour and a half, but, um, but yeah, but we had a lot to go through this week and next week we'll kind of go back. Yeah, this week more. was absolutely incredible right. and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And if any of the EastEnders team are watching it was well watching or listening really. yeah um i just wanted to say how much i appreciated that yeah it, it was, was great amazing. representation as well i mean the yeah. first legal gay marriage on eastenders yeah yeah, yeah. i mean and, and, and it can't be underplayed and how well it was done and yeah um you know and that we had two uh gay men who are writers who wrote the the scenes and did a beautiful job yeah. um really very true to life so uh you know darren and pete thank you for all your beautiful yeah. words always but especially you know yeah especially this the, week and yeah. last week yeah but, but um we will let you go for now but we have a great show coming up next week and we will see you guys next week see you next week bye okay. cool and then i'll stop